It is very difficult for some reason to obtain permission to treat patients with antioplastins in the United States. Uh, I think this country has the finest uh, bureaucratic regulations in the world and the other countries are way behind. Uh, two years ago, we finished our phase two clinical trial program. Uh, we concentrated primarily on the treatment of malignant brain tumors. We finished successfully 14 phase two clinical trials under FDA supervision, which proved not only uh, increased response rate according to the protocol, uh, which means there was a proof of efficacy coming from phase two clinical trials, and a proof that the treatment is well tolerated. So we are criticized why it took such a long time for us to do clinical trials, and one of the reasons was that we wanted to know also what is the long-term survival, and that's why we are extending our observation for a long time. Some of the highest survival rate, uh, and this is after 10 or 15 years, is in uh, brainstem glioma. In brainstem glioma, uh, we are dealing with about 50% survival over 15 years, which is amazing, because normally everybody is dying with brainstem glioma diagnosis. And these are the patients who could not be helped by surgery, radiation, or chemotherapy. The survival is lower, of course, in variety of brainstem glioma, which is called DIPG, or diffuse intrinsic brainstem glioma, but it's still substantial after 10, 15, or even 25 years. So basically, after we finished clinical trial program here in the United States, and after our Japanese colleagues reported exciting data in the treatment of uh, colorectal cancer, which spread to the liver by running randomized controlled clinical trials, which shows doubling long-term survival in such patients, we found ourselves under horrible harassment by regulatory agencies and by people who were hired by our adversaries. Then uh, the last uh, stage of quote-unquote war against us started. Uh, we are exposed to one of the longest in the history inspection by the FDA, which lasted almost three months. Then after we are able to sort out the issues with the FDA, and FDA gave us green light to proceed with uh, additional clinical trials and move forward with the approval process. Uh, we are furiously attacked by Texas Medical Board based on some frivolous charges. And uh, what follows after that, uh, the investigations from various agencies which normally they never ask us questions about our uh, activities. And so we had audit by Internal Revenue Service or IRS. We have also submitted to audit by uh, Security and Exchange Agency. And uh, these things, obviously, we have nothing against, but it costs a lot of time and it costs a lot of money because it requires retaining CPA like uh, high class attorneys who are specialized in this area to make sure that we answer the questions right. We are out of this except for Texas Medical Board which continue to harass us and clearly would like to destroy our clinic. We would like to close our clinic. They started litigation of me personally and uh, oncologists and the other doctors who are working for our clinic. And so simply their action is aimed to destroy our activities and they would like to rush uh, to do it quickly because they realize that we are very close to final approval of our medication. For some reason they don't want to have cure of cancer. But in the last year uh, we published uh, approximately 17 articles in peer review journals and um, uh, we presented uh, seven presentations and at two large international cancer congresses of neuro-oncology. So we are very active and we continue to prepare additional publications. Currently we are working on five additional publications to be 
sent to press. Uh, however, we found that uh, as soon as uh, our publication is accepted in a respected medical journal, there is tremendous pressure on the editors of the journal. Our adversaries are trying to convince them that they should never accept any paper from us again. So, with some exceptions, after publishing of the first article, usually these journals are refusing to publish next articles from us. But there are some exceptions, there are some journals which are not yielding to such pressure and which are publishing our articles. Hopefully this nonsense also will disappear. It's getting a little easier, but uh, we found that, uh, unfortunately, about 50% of the journals in which we publish, they don't publish the second time because they have a lot of pressure from uh, the other people, uh, from our adversaries, do not publish our results anymore. So what are they afraid? We are reporting our results, we are reporting how to successfully treat patients with incurable disease. It looks like this should receive priority in publishing. If our uh, results are brought to the public and to the specialists, if they begin to use our technology, then <laughs> unfortunately some of the big players will be hurt because at this moment, there's practically nothing which can save people suffering from malignant, inoperable brain tumors. All of them are sentenced to die with current treatment available. But these treatments are highly lucrative. These are billions of dollars which are spent on such treatments. And this would change hands once the other people will start using our treatment.